Hey, this is Casey. Today, let's make this stylish line art using Cinema 4D and reshoots. I'll be using Vectorizer. This is a tool to create spline outlines from 2D pictures. Usually, we'll load a black and white image like this. We're getting very clean outlines. And if we load some realistic pictures like this, it won't really give us any results. I'm gonna do a very weird thing right now, is to load an outline image like this. So we'll get outlines out of outlines. I had this model in my scene, I picked an angle and applied a two shader to it. The base and the reflection channels were turned off, and I only had this white emission. Then I added the contours, both external one and internal one. This is super simple. I then rendered it and got this outline image. Now we can load this image in the texture slot. Let's adjust the scale a little bit. Now if we tone down the tolerance, we can get this sort of detailed jig-jack look, which also looks pretty interesting. And if we increase the tolerance, we'll get these curved lines that remind me of one-line drawing. Yeah, this is pretty cool as well. So the higher the tolerance, the more abstract the lines become. What we can further do is to tweak the spline interpolation. Like if I crank up the angle, meaning that the point number gets decreased, then we can get this kind of geometric lines. Let's try a different mode as well. Maybe let's just turn it off. Now let's adjust the tolerance again. Look at this, how cool is this? We are getting some geometric abstraction here. In my example render, I picked a tolerance at about 6, like this. Looking pretty nice to me. To render this scene, we need to add a redshift object tag to it and enable the curve. I will go with cylinders. Now we can preview it. Of course, it's going to be gray, so it's time to assign a material. I have this emissive material. No base, no reflection, only emission is turned on. And I plug a ramp like this into the emission channel. Cool, what we can do now is to add some variations to the lines. For example, I can get a ramp and plug this into the opacity channel so that I can get some opacity changes. I feel like this area on the right is too transparent we can make the black more gray to solve this issue. Furthermore, we can also change the thickness of these lines by tweaking this spline in the curve tab. Like this, we'll get some thickness variations. I will load up a preset I made earlier. Cool. Maybe let's also decrease the overall thickness a bit. Awesome, but I want to make it even more interesting. Let's say I duplicate this vectorizer. For this one, I will have another material. And I will change the color. Maybe a blue like this. Okay, we can make it way more thicker. The next step is to tweak the tolerance. I will make it more abstract like this. I feel like this is probably too solid. I want to make it more transparent like this. Now if we bring back the purple lines, we'll have this. It's almost like the sketchbook style I did before, but in this one, we're using rift shifts. Lastly, let me add one more vectorizer. 
This time, maybe we have a orange color like this. The thickness can be reduced a bit. Same for the tolerance. Here for the curve, I also want to pull these spline points to the bottom. So we can have disconnected lines. Finally, I feel like we can offset these vectorizers a bit so that their colors don't mix up altogether. Before we proceed, I want to mention this outer border. If we load a black background image, there wouldn't be any border, but I feel like loading a white background image produces better splines, so I just use the white one. Anyway, these borders can be easily deleted. Let me make a backup first, then I'm gonna hit C to make them editable. I'll select these points and hit UW to select connected points, then delete. In terms of animation, let me use this one as an example. Usually, I will add a mode spline. Make a spline mode and drag in our vectorizer. This way, we can create a draw-on animation simply by adjusting the start and end of the mode spline. Furthermore, because mode spline is a MoGraph object, we'll be able to add all kinds of effectors to it. Let's say the formula factor. It will give us a very quick animation like this. Or maybe step effector. We can get something like this. And of course, we can use fills to drive the animation. Like so. The push apart effector can work as well. Like this, we can create an animation that goes from rough to detailed. Cool, you'll notice there's also a forces tab here. So like we can add a force like turbulence. Well, this is looking pretty weird and definitely needs some fine tuning, but I'm just saying that there's a, the possibility to use forces to drive the animation. That's all for today's tutorial. Feel free to download the project files and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. See you next time.